Yo, what's good YouTube? It's Boardsy, and in this video I'm going to be doing the ultimate mousepad tier list. This is the follow-up to the mouse tier list, but now with mousepads, it features 37 mousepads that I have used in the past year. In the mouse tier list, I include some mice I didn't use, and people really did not like that. Um, so I have used all of these pads. If your favorite pad's missing, it's fucking not, because I've used every important mousepad. And once again, going to go out on a limb and state that the tier list you see at the end of this video will be the most in-depth tier list on the platform regarding mouse pads. Uh, but yeah, getting right into it, GSRSE going to throw us in the C tier. Uh, many people seem to think the GSRSE is a god mouse pad, uh, but they also seem to think it's the only mouse pad. Um, it really, it's $35, it's rarely in stock, but people fucking flock over it and like it sells out immediately whenever it restocks. Um, it's just extremely overhyped. If you live in a relatively humid environment, the pad is going to go to shit. Um, like it can go to shit like within days of getting it um, that happened to me when I got my blue one uh, but yeah it's just really a no-go it wears down extremely quickly as well nobody has had a GSRC last for a fucking year um, it just simply never happens and I just don't think it's a pad worth getting but not like completely dismal uh next up we have the aqua control plus uncoded um i'm gonna throw this in the seal of approval tier this is a mouse pad that i got a few months ago um and it's held up very well so far obviously it's not like long-term durability but it is an uncoded pad it is slightly rougher uh offers a ton of stopping power though and a good bit of speed however i would say it's more of a control pad while there is the aqua control plus coded edition um that is definitely a lot faster and has less stopping power but it does have that coating so it will wear down um, so it is going to go in the A tier while the uncoated goes in the S tier just because it's at the same price it's not coated the glides um you're gonna like either of them if you get the pad but i do think the uncode just edges out there next up we have the akari um i'm gonna throw this in the dog shit tier this is an extremely overpriced pad i don't even know why razor released it it's 60 dollars. it's only available in one size which is like ridiculously small um it's really fast like maybe faster than the helios even uh but yeah i made a review of it it was just an extremely weird pad and at the price it's not even a niche item dude like i doubt they made even like fucking ten thousand of them uh because that product just did not sell next up we have the glorious ice gonna throw us in the dog shit tier um i would be extremely sus of anybody who is still positive of this pad um it has some of the worst durability issues i've experienced i don't even think it comes from humidity um they claim it's glass infused but really it's just like a film put on top of a piece of cloth because i removed the coating from the pad and it was just a standard oem cloth pad the rubber base and then just like this fucking film that felt like slightly rubberized almost it's not like glass infused in the same way that the shitting kai is uh and with the durability issues i just fucking consider it a meme pad and they try to market the ice as a budget shitting kai but after shipping it comes to around 50 dollars and it's really i cannot stress this enough not a 50 dollar pad um terrible rubber base slightly raised stitching and man just fucking do not get the glorious ice uh next up we have the decanic control and this is a pad that I had a long time ago. It was actually like one of my first pads. I'm going to throw it in the A tier. Um, for one, it's not made anymore. They co have completely stopped producing it um, in like the actually viable sizes. But when it was around, it was one of the cheapest, like most solid pads. I'd probably put it in the S tier. Uh, but since you just can't get it anymore, it's just in a weird place. Uh, but however, the mouse pad company is the exact same thing. They just straight up yoinked the surface from the like Decana control and passed it off as their own. I made a video called the Mousepad Company Exposed because they actually try to market it like as their own surface. They call it fucking Duraglide. Um, so I just found that to be sort of scummy. And the pads are pretty expensive, but they do offer some pretty cool designs. And I mean, it would be ranked way lower, but the Decanic pads just aren't available. Um, it's colloquially referred to as the Mousepad Company factory fire of 2020 when they burned down the decanic control factories um, but nobody really knows how true that statement is so yeah they're just both going to be in the a tier not to offend anybody politically another thing to mention though is that the decanic control did have some major quality issues while the mousepad company does have better quality um, but yeah they both offer the same surface watch my reviews if you want like more info uh, now we have the equate plus which is 
it's actually pretty rare for me to put an uncoated pad in such a low tier, um, but it is just such a fucking weird mouse pad. Um, it has like more speed to it than the standard Equate, which is a good thing, but it's extremely affected by temperature. And when it's cold, it's going to be a very fast pad, but when it's warm, it gets extremely muddy. Um, so it's not really consistent. Uh, it does have those equal X and Y axes, though, which is just very Equate plus moment. But if you want a good mouse pad, you're going to want to look elsewhere um, because it's just one of those pads that find so many excuses to get muddy uh, next up we have the zero seal of approval um, one of the best mouse pads available on this earth that we inhabit um, in either soft or x soft i wouldn't really get the mid but i mean it can't be too bad thank you for the off stream fall though uh, but yeah it's the number one control pad artisan stitching artisan quality and just a good control pad surface it's extremely safe extremely reliable um number one japan baby and next up we have the glorious fire which is a pad i really just don't like um glorious legitimately just took the fanatic dash like the exact same mouse pad made by the exact same factory um, and passed off as their own, which there isn't really a problem with, uh, but it is also more expensive and available in less sizes and smaller sizes than the Fnatic Dash, so it's kind of just inferior, uh, no reason to really consider it, so I, I could put it in the dog shit tier, but that doesn't make sense since the Dash is in the A tier, you know, tier lists are very complicated um, fields of study, so I'm just working on perfecting it, but yeah, I feel like it's alright to have them here. Uh, Glorious considers the code or the surface to be laminated um, but it's not since it's just like uncoated the fuck is a lamination um, and the fanatic dash is called an f15 surface so really stupid names to describe like like very watered down he ends that i just wouldn't really buy um, especially since they're over 40 dollars each and next up we have the gigantus v2 which is honestly an all right mouse pad all things considered uh, it's basically like Razor's take on the QCK. It's an uncoated pad, very slow, like one of the slowest pads I've used. I would consider it a mud pad. And it's also affected by temperature and humidity. And I know it's one of the only mouse pads available in South America where it's like extremely humid. So I really do feel bad for you guys. Uh, but if you are on a really tight budget, it's a solid mouse pad um, and cheaper than like any of the pads in the tiers above it. Uh, so yeah, um, next up we have the Odin Gaming Infinity, and I'm going to put this in the seal of approval tier. This is a pad I used recently, and it surprised me a lot. Um, Odin Gaming, makers of the Zero F Gravity, one of the fucking worst pads, uh, managed to make a pad that made it to the seal of approval. Thank you for the off-stream follow. Uh, it's basically just a, not even watered down Hien at this point. It's kind of just like a Hien mid, not clone, but like 90% similar to like a Hien. Uh, and yeah, I just struggle to find any real flaws with it. The quality of it is good enough, and it's available for like $30. So yeah, seal of approval tier. Um, Extra Fi GP4, going to put this in the S tier. Um, this is one of the best control pads on the market right now, at least of the ones that I've tried. It's available in a ton of like decent colorways, uh, and I'd say it's a real zero competitor. Um, it feels like a better GSRSE, and it definitely has better durability as well. It is coated, which is the only thing that keeps it from being in the seal of approval tier um, but all around a really good control pad $35 if you can't afford a zero can't go wrong with a gp4 um, now we have the kinsui 2 i don't really have, know how to pronounce it um, and i can't say i really care it's such a bad mouse pad it's like fucking 10 millimeters thick they say it's six but i'm telling you this is not a six millimeter thick pad watch my esport tiger roundup um, if you really want to know more about it just so bad um, yeah, just, it's bad. <laughs> now we have the Hied, which is still my all-time favorite mouse pad. Um, just like the Zero, it has that top-tier quality, top-tier stitching, insane rubber backing, and the surface of the Hien is just magical. I would recommend watching my original review of it, because I've talked about the Hien so many times, um, but it's just really... I've got it. I've fallen in love with it. Like, I don't need a girlfriend. I got my fucking artist in Hien. Seal of approval. 
And next up we have the Inked Gaming Pad, which is going to go in the S tier, and this might surprise some people, but the Inked Gaming Pad, it's just a standard coated cloth pad. Um, really nothing too special about the pad itself, but it's available in generic designs for like $15 for the XL size, which is like 450 by 400 like a good size um, for 15 so it's like one of the most affordable pads. It will wear down eventually, but it is like dirt cheap. Uh, I wouldn't really say it competes with the GP4 in terms of like quality, um, but it's much cheaper, so it is still going to be in the S tier. You can also get whatever design you want on the Ink Gaming Pad. It does add to the cost, but that's a pretty cool feature not many of these pads have. Uh, the Hayate Atsu New, um, it would be in the seal of approval tier if the durability has been updated. Um, and I'm just going to go out on a limb and presume it has, uh, because people have had the pad for around three months now, the updated ones, and I haven't seen any complaints about the pad wearing down. Um, and if the durability is updated, the Hayate Atsu is easily one of the best pads. It is expensive, around $70 shipped to the United States, but it is one of the most premium feeling mouse pads there. Is. It is Random Frank P's main mouse pad, but if the updated Atsu has the same durability as the other artisan pads, like if it's going to last you multiple years, um, it's definitely going to be in the seal of approval tier. Um, I do have a review of the Xsoft one coming pretty soon, so watch out for that. Uh, but yeah, it feels like your arm is resting on a cloud. Um, it's an insane surface with tons of stopping power and a legitimately like cool weave to look at. I rarely find things like that cool, but I don't know. Pretty sick. Um, and now we have the old Hayate Atsu. I don't even know if you can buy this anymore. Um, so I guess it just goes in the dog shit tier. Um, really just an obsolete mouse pad, so no reason to buy it. You can't buy it. And now we have the Long Tank Special Edition Huawian, or the Huawian Special Edition, whatever, um, B tier. Uh, it's basically just a worse version of the coded Aqua Control Plus in every category. Um, so it's just going to go in the B tier, really not much originality, and the quality slightly worse, so it's not really worth considering. Uh, the Lingyun, basically the same thing. However, it is slightly faster, has a bit less stopping power. It's a bit more slick of a surface than the Huawian, uh, but I don't know. I don't really like either of them. The only people I see who like main them like fucking Fortnite kids who get sent them by East Fort Tiger. Uh, but yeah, they're all right. The Long Tang, however, is much better. I'm going to throw it in the A tier. Um, this was a pad I liked a lot, and it was extremely comfortable. Uh, it is $30, and it's coated cloth. It has a similar feeling to the Inked Gaming, but it's 4 millimeters, and it is extremely plushy. Um, and I always just found it to be extremely comfortable, and it was something that was just easy to perform well with. Uh, but mine did start to wear down pretty fast um, after like a decent bit of use so yeah gonna go in the a tier now we have the linus tech tips pad uh gonna put this in the c tier probably it is available in tons of sizes basically unlimited sizes for a uh, $30 plus shipping uh, mine came out to like 38 for 900 by 500 millimeters uh, but you can get like 1200 by 700 for like $40 if you like uh, so you can get a ton of mouse pad material but the mouse pad material itself isn't very good um the design is pretty mediocre and I, if you want to support linus hey it's fucking a seal of approval tier uh but as a mouse like as mouse pads go it's not really a competitor uh just a very standard coated cloth pad and next up we have the Shininkai, which a few months ago would have been in one of the lower tiers, but now I'm actually going to throw it in the S tier. The Shininkai itself is a truly glass-infused surface. It is a hybrid pad. It feels really unique. It feels like you're playing on a hard pad, um, but not really. It's hard to explain with English words. Uh, maybe like barbaric noises could do a better job, but the reason it's in the S tier is because underneath the surface, so like when the coating wears down, you can just remove it. I made a tutorial video and you will have a hien. Um, they basically just put the fucking like coating on top of the hien and that's what makes the pad so unique. Uh, so it actually makes it a pretty decent value. It is like over $70 shipped to the US, same price as the Atsu. Uh, but since you get a hien under it, the value is very good. Uh, but it's not in the seal of approval tier because if you want fucking hien, buy a hien. Um, <laughs> 
And next up we have the Neon Pad, which is basically the same thing as the Long Tank, just like a notch slower. It's a very controlled mouse pad. Static friction isn't too high, but the uh, dynamic friction is very low. And I found myself being very smooth with this pad, um, surprisingly. Uh, but yeah, not going to be in one of these tiers. Uh, next up we have the Minerva, which used to actually go on sale for like $15 at Lethal Gaming Gear, but now it's like back to 30 and it's just a slightly worse version of the Long Tang. I'm going to throw it in the B tier. A lot of these pads are painfully similar, um, so I'm just really not going to talk too much about them. The Minerva, it's just very close to a Long Tang B tier. Um, now we have the MP510. I'm going to throw this in the C tier. Um, I was kind of fond of it when I first started using it, uh, but it has one of the most rough surfaces like people call the he and rough like you should fucking try the mp510 um the stitching isn't that good the sizing is retarded um the xl size is basically the only usable one the large one and like the small ones don't have nearly enough vertical room and yeah the surface itself is really rough it is cordura so it's not going to wear down and it's not affected by the environment but in my opinion, it is just outclassed by the MPC 450, which is conveniently the next pad. Um, this is going to go in the seal of approval tier. It really is the king of Cordura pads, in my opinion. It's available in a ton of sizes as well. I think it's MPX M or MPC 890 uh, for like the desk mat size. And yeah, it's going to last you basically forever. Some people have incompatibility issues with the G Pro wireless, which is something I personally don't have. And this pad used to have a gigantic logo in the top right. You can see it, but in the newer batches, they have removed that. There's really no flaws with this pad, aside from the uh, relatively abrasive stitching. And the surface itself, it kind of feels like a smoothed out mouse pad esque pair of jeans uh but it has zero static friction and it's a very fun pad to play with it does take some adjusting to uh but conveniently it is dirt cheap uh now we have the mpx 390 from endgame and this is a dog shit pad i'm not sure many people know this pad exists i think i have like the only review posted on youtube um it's only available in one size 390 by 390 uh it's Cordura, it's unique, it feels way different than the MPC 450, but it's also like $60, um, and there's really no reason it should cost that much. Uh, it has this silicone base, which Endgame said was very expensive to a make, and I just wonder why. Um, like, why drive up the price for really no reason, and it's also only available in that size for the same reason, so really just not a good pad. And next up we have the Zero Gravity, which is going to go in the seal of approval tier because Odin Gaming paid me a bajillion dollars to a shill the infinity. Nah, I'm kidding. Fucking Zero Gravity's a dog shit pad. Um, just literally never consider the Zero Gravity. If you find yourself in a position where you have the Zero Gravity in your cart, ask yourself at what moment you went wrong. Try to pinpoint a date because, um, yeah, it's really that bad. Uh, it's like just one of the most OEM cheap feeling pads. It's the Series M slash Thor, but without a coating. It really embodies the meaning of dog shit. Um, but yeah, it's <laughs> that wasn't even over dramatic. Trust me, the pad is that bad. Um, <laughs> now we have the QCK. I'm going to throw it in the C tier. The QCK is an iconic pad. Um, legendary, you could even say. And now that it's available in like the 5XL and 6XL versions, I do want to give it another try, like ironically. Um, but there's really just no reason to be considering a QCK. If you want the perfect version of a QCK that will last forever, get an Artisan Zero. Um, if not, just consider one of the other control pads I mentioned. Really no reason to try a QCK. Now we have the Kins also with the QCK. If you're on one, just try another pad because a lot of people love the QCK, but they've only used the QCK. Similar to fucking like G502 users. Okay, now we have the Kinsuiz One. I'm sorry to Asia for mispronouncing that name. Uh, but yeah, this is a dog shit mouse pad. It is one of the slowest pads I've ever used. It's easily Esport Tiger's slowest mouse pad and probably the slowest one on this list, especially after it gets completely fucked by humidity and also the temperature um i talk about it in my esport tiger roundup this pad was impossible for me to use for any significant amount of time because of how muddy it got it was just truly like unenjoyable and i just found myself immediately swapping off of it i find it hard to believe that anybody mains this pad um if you main the kin sweet swan let me know so i can hide you from commenting on my channel um i'm kidding but seriously does anybody use this pad now we have the raiden and i'm gonna throw this in the seal of approval 
approval tier. I used to be like wary of recommending the Raiden uh, because it was so fast, but really, uh, if you don't want a fast pad, you don't have to buy it. Um, but if you are in the market for a faster surface, the Raiden is one of the best. It's uncoated, but it's still silky smooth, which is not something you can say about a lot of the other uncoated pads on this list. Um, it's extremely fast, not a lot of stopping power. You are going to have to actually be able to control your mouse to use it effectively. It's available in mid and X soft, so if you get it in mid, it is going to be really fast, not a lot of cushion. Um, so once again, going to have to have mouse control. And of course, it has all of the features that really set Artisan apart from the competition. Damn, I should have made an Artisan tier. That would have made so much sense. Uh, pretend there's an Artisan tier. Oh, wait, also, fucking Decanic Control. It's kind of triggering me that it's still in the A tier. Gonna move it down to the uh, dog shit tier because it's no longer available. It's only available in the mini size. Okay, but yeah, Raiden S tier pad. You just gotta be able to control your mouse. Um, <laughs> Skypad, gonna put this in the a or i don't know it's a very hard pad to recommend but if you're in the market for a glass pad i think it's the best because there's some pads like the glide pad um that may be better but they're like fucking 600 dollars the sky pad is now available in the xl size for i believe like 85 dollars shipped and the thing is it will literally last you forever it is a piece of glass uh, it does eat up mouse feet, and you can't use ceramic feet, so I don't really know what the mouse feet solution is. Um, you kind of get fucked over there, uh, but yeah, if you want a glass pad, it's the best of the best, but for me, I don't really like glass pads, so I'm going to put it in the A tier, but it was still usable and has a surprising amount of stopping power for a pad that fast. Uh, they're sending me an XL one, so I'll be stoked to try that out. Sloth mat, dude. The first mouse pad I ever had, like the first like gaming mouse pad, I guess, um, had this sloth design on it. I thought it was fucking sick because it was it was an amazing mouse pad um if i ever find it i might review it i had like the fucking xl size it was so sick seal of approval tier even though it, they have gone out of business and now we have the bone pad ending it off with the bone pad the worst mouse pad um well maybe not the worst but actually maybe it is the worst um, it was only available for like $72 or $42. No, no, no. It was $42 and $69 um, for either like a XL size or like a gigantic mouse pad size. And it was just so slow, so affected by humidity, but it was extremely smooth, but smooth kind of like fake leather in a car not really smooth in the way a mouse pad feels smooth uh like the neon is probably like one of the smoothest pads on this list it didn't feel smooth in that way um it just kind of felt bad all around and with the bone pad they were developing it trying to make it better and then it seemed like they kind of just stopped they haven't really updated on social media um so yeah you can live without a bone pad uh this is the list though um it's kind of surprising i actually enjoy a lot more mouse pads than I thought I did. Um, it would have made sense so if I had an artisan tier. Um, but yeah, anything that is S tier and above, I would really recommend. Um, but A tier, B tier, these are solid mouse pads as well. Um, that's going to be all for this video. If you made it to the end, um, make sure to be subscribed already or else why are you watching full videos? Um, but yeah, that's going to be all. Once again, agree with most of my takes. Peace.